If forced to choose, it's the sense of smell most people believe they could live without. But losing it can be life-altering. Scientists say COVID attacks the cells that help communicate what we're smelling. We can lose our appetite, or worse still, the will to live. Sense of smell helps define who we are. I'm Ben Fazul, and nice to have you along. A study of 2,500 patients who lost their sense of smell and or taste showed 40% of them had completely regained it half a year later. 2% reported no improvement whatsoever. For Belgian Anne-Sophie Lercan, pleasant scents, such as her favorite perfumes, smell awful. After she got infected with COVID-19 a few months ago, at first she could no longer smell anything. Then many smells were distorted, one of the most common side effects of the virus. She can only see the spring on her balcony. There is a tiny bit of something, but I don't know the smell. That's frustrating and makes me a bit sad. Jean-Michel Maillard can understand very well how Locan is feeling. The Frenchman lost his sense of smell due to an accident five years ago. It's the smell of his children he misses most. But Maillard does not want to give up his passion for cooking. A bit of color is good. We eat with our eyes after all. A bit like the great chefs in France are doing it. But it is the nose with its millions of olfactory cells that defines the taste of this salmon. After his accident, Maillard was angry because no one could help him. Even if an estimated 5% of the French population suffers from a distorted sense of smell. But with time, his anger gave way to an idea. He founded an association and developed olfactory training in cooperation with scientists with concentrated scents, rose, lemon, cloves. The sense of smell is a sense that is as important as other senses. Many forget about it. Most people only discover it once they've lost it. Since the beginning of the pandemic, thousands of affected people all over Europe have been using his sense of smell training techniques. Belgian Anne-Sophie Larkin is also exercising her nose. Her doctor has seen for herself that many patients are recovering thanks to the training. For example, because the olfactory cells damaged by the virus renew themselves. This gives me hope, but my motivation varies. And so does my hope, because sometimes I'm just sad. I keep asking myself if it will ever come back. Even if things are getting better only slowly, Anne-Sophie Lurquin is hoping these smell bottles will help her put on her perfume again without upsetting her nose. Let's look at the science surrounding this. Pamela Dalton is an olfactory scientist. So, Pamela, just how quickly can people recover their sense of smell? Because the researchers I've spoken to say the majority of COVID sufferers are massively impaired. You're correct that they can be massively impaired during the acute ver form of the virus. However, fortunately, most people do recover their ability to smell sometimes within days or weeks after the virus passes. Unfortunately, a small portion of individuals seem to have a persistent loss. Uh, are they the, the ones who are suffering from long COVID? In some cases, smell loss is the only symptom that they may have ever experienced from COVID. But yes, some individuals with long COVID also do experience this persistent smell loss. It can go on beyond six months. Wow. And, and what are the consequences of that? I, I, I mean, I guess you, you just don't want to eat, do you, if it doesn't taste good? And uh, there are lots of other things involved, like relationships and depression. It, it can really impact on your life, can't it? 
it can be very distressing, <clears throat> particularly for people who never thought that losing their sense of smell would have such a dramatic impact on their life. Uh, <clears throat> eating is certainly the first thing that is affected. And some people actually go in two different ways. Some people stop eating because of the lack of enjoyment of food. And some people overeat because they're looking for that satisfaction that they can no longer get from food flavor. A scientist... Loss of smell can also... So, sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, loss of smell can also change your relationships with your environment and the people around you. Familiar places and familiar people no longer seem quite the same when you cannot smell them. So are scientists any closer to agreeing on why this happens? There are intriguing studies being published almost every week. We know, for example, that the virus does attack certain types of cells that express the ACE2 receptor. But it looks like the persistent loss of smell may be more associated with ongoing viral replication and inflammation in the nasal passages, in the neuroepithelium, where all of the cells that support our sense of smell are located. Why does the virus do this? Because it's basically giving itself away. It's a clear sign you're about to become infectious and most people would quarantine themselves, of course, and prevent the virus from spreading. <laughs> Well, actually, that's a really interesting question because until it was made clear that sudden loss of smell was a cardinal symptom of SARS-CoV-2 infection, most people really didn't understand what was going on with them. Uh, if they experienced a fever, for example, or severe muscle aches or extreme coughing, they might have isolated. But many people who suddenly lost their sense of smell were not actually quarantining themselves until the message got out that this was indeed one of the best ways to know whether someone had been infected with the virus. We also mentioned earlier in the show that the olfactory cells are <laughs> able to renew themselves and regularly. Is that the same for everyone, though? Well, in a normal human sense of smell, yes. The olfactory neurons regenerate throughout the lifespan. Unfortunately, when there is disruption by a virus that can lead to inflammation, this can actually attack the system in multiple ways. It can produce inflammation, as I said earlier. It can also attack the supporting cells that are involved in the regeneration process. And some viruses also attack the olfactory neurons themselves. And what's your take on smell training and, and its effectiveness? At the present time, smell training seems to be the best recommendation for people who have persistent smell loss following COVID infection. Um, it's, it requires some persistence and compliance. It doesn't work if you only do it casually. But the evidence is that if you stick with the program, which generally involves about 12 weeks of smelling four odorants twice a day and doing it very mindfully, that approximately half of the people that have been in studies actually do regain their sense of smell and do so faster than people who don't undertake smell training. So it's a lot of work, but definitely worth it in the long run, you say? If you're depressed, if your lifestyle has changed because you can no longer smell the people, the places, the food you enjoy eating, then it certainly is a worthwhile effort. It has very little risk except for perhaps boredom and a little frustration in the early days, but it has been shown to have efficacy in post-viral smell loss and so therefore it is one of the recommended treatments. Good to hear Pamela Dalton. Thanks for joining us today on the show. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Over to Derek Williams now. He's got an interesting viewer question about natural immunity. How long does natural immunity acquired from having the disease last? This is another question where a little background comes in handy. Um, when you're infected by a pathogen, for the first time, your body forms what's called an immunological memory of it. Now, experts say these kinds of memories are in some ways 
like neurological memories. A few will stay with you throughout your life, while others will disappear after just a few months. Um, when it comes to COVID-19, we still don't know exactly how long immunity and those who recovered will on average last. But several studies, um, including one from early February that's been cited a lot, they indicate that in most people who caught the disease, naturally acquired immunity seems to remain pretty robust for quite a while. The study looked at a range of factors associated with an ongoing immune response in people who'd recovered from COVID-19, and it found that in the overwhelming majority of them, immune memory remained apparently strong at least six months after recovery. Um, many experts are now hopeful that, that most people who had the disease could prove resistant to reinfection for at least a year and hopefully longer. Um, that's good news, though it's likely not the whole story. Um, with other coronaviruses, immune memory tends to lapse over time, which is why authorities also recommend that people who had COVID-19 and recovered still get vaccinated at least once um, because vaccines provide a safe way to update and refresh immune memory and could potentially make you even more resistant to SARS-CoV-2 um, and for a longer period of time than natural infection alone would. And to end the show, we leave you with the Dutch scientists who've taught bees to sniff out COVID-19. Researchers gave them sugary water as a reward for identifying positive samples only. Once they got used to the system, they'd stick out their tongues automatically. The results can be provided in just seconds. Of course, bees have a keen sense of smell. Let's hope they don't lose it from COVID. Thanks for joining us on DW's COVID-19 special.